Let's get into, uh, we got some spillover. We're going to hit you with a little bit of Marlon Mack. Got some questions on here about what you should do with them, selling high, or whatever you think you should do with them. We're here to tell you what we think you should do with them. <laughs> so, Patreon edition, spillover from regular show edition. <laughs> from regular show edition. Who, who wants to start off? I'll, I'll go, let's go Big Co. first and foremost. <laughs> All right. So, we've been... Pitched a couple of guys, Philip Lindsay, uh, Aaron Jones, Tariq Cohen, uh, first round pick mix. I think definitively this guy is probably currently the most expensive out of all of these guys. I could agree with that. I think Marlon Max probably the most expensive of these cats. Um, I was Tariq Cohen's done it for maybe twice as long this year, but I think and Marlon Philip Lindsay has too. But Marlon Max got it kind of all to himself, so I think I'd agree too. Well, I think the part, the main part of the argument is probably his main thing that he's leaning against, other than you know thirty-one and twenty-eight PPR points back to back weeks. Was he's got Andrew Luck, and we've been digging for, we've been searching and scouring for Andrew Luck's running back for a couple of years now, and you know we talked about it for a few minutes last week about Marlon Mack, you know breaking out against the Bills, and it is the Raiders. It was on the road. But it is the Raiders. But, and you know, obviously this Monday night, the Bills defense looked fantastic against the Patriots for about as long as they could. I mean, mm-hmm. it wasn't even the Patriots that broke. It was the defense that scored a touchdown at the end of the day to break their back. His Patriots offense didn't – Tommy didn't throw a touchdown. They didn't do – James White snuck one in on the ground, and that was it. I mean, it was – the Bills defense looked great. Maybe they were, you know, just looking forward to the Patriots and then let's give it our all and let the – uh First time on Monday night in 10 years. Right. Maybe they were like, hey, we got the Patriots on Monday night next week and just kind of there like taking dildos on the field. Right. Just taking Jeez. it easy against the Colts. <laughs> and the Colts just blew out the Bills. And so two weeks in a row, Marlon Mack goes off. And the biggest thing for me is the Colts who have had maybe one of the worst rosters over the last couple, not maybe, but one of the very, very worst wa- rosters for years. You know, Peyton Manning gets hurt. They go oh in the season and are lucky enough to draft Andrew Luck, and then they make the playoffs because Andrew Luck's awesome. Andrew Luck gets hurt and they're terrible again. Andrew Luck comes back and they're good again. It's just it's not hard to see I'm what's not happening sure if over there. Good right now, but I, I good mean, enough. good enough, good compared to what they were without Andrew Luck. It's really good, and I just feel like the biggest thing for me is the offensive line play. Um, just obviously. Uh, checking back that game out and watched a couple of uh, shots of people breaking down that game film on Twitter and this and that and just like showing what's going on with that offensive line. And obviously they put the capital into the the guard at one Quentin Nelson three one four something like that. Quentin Nelson Quentin Nelson out of Notre Dame one of the baddest dude one of the baddest probably dudes the best is, offensive lineman in the draft. And then they have another high pick uh, on, on that a tackle line. yeah. Um, and then they picked up a free agent uh, off the street either last year or this year, and he's panning out really well. So the line is finally starting to homogenize and come together. Mm. Congeal. Yeah, both of those. They uh, they they did more. It's not as porous. They Yeah, they did a lot less sieve giving in the last couple of weeks than they've done in years. They That, that offensive line has impressed me, and – Andrew Luck continues to come on and the supporting cast to catch passes was a little bit laughable earlier in the year, but you got Jack Doyle back and he's just a magnet in the middle of the field converting first downs. And that was one of the reasons why I felt I I took the the Colts minus three against the Raiders because mainly because of Jack Doyle coming back and adding to that pass catching core. Um, I, I just, I, I liked what I've seen with the Colts as a whole, but getting a little better every week, and then this last two weeks of Marlon Mack has been ridiculous. Um, I was not head over heels in love with Marlon Mack coming into the year. Um, I give uh, not as much patience as maybe I should to some people that aren't don't have that first and second round draft capital that get nicked up early, and we've seen this show before, especially for the Colts. Um, over and over again where the running backs just have filtered through the last couple of years and other than Frank Gore, nobody's been any good. And man, I got to, I got to hand it to the situation and uh, it was Andrew Luck 
was what you were looking for for the running backs. And now, with an, if they got all, some good positive offensive line play to go with it, right? And a ty, and Tyree and and, and Tyree Kill, um, T. Y. Hilton stretching the field and some good tight ends, but you know with uh, Doyle coming back and then Ebron's been a beast and a couple of role player wide receivers and Dontrell Edmonds showed up this week and it's that time of the year it's he's a big it's up, that time of the year it's November <laughs> it, yeah Dontrell Edmonds <laughs> or just an, about November he's an upgrade on Chester Rogers in my opinion Chester Rogers just not a big catcher of the football <laughs> uh not big on catching it when it comes to him so I that's just I love it I love the situation and it's here and Marlon Mack plugged right in and he's been a lot better than I thought he would be so this is a first round pick for you all day for Mack right I mean, I would give it, but like you said, there's no way, nobody's taking a first round pick for Mac. What about a one and a two? Mm, I don't see why. I mean, to get this out of the way early, I'm not giving the one one for Marlon Mack. Sure. But if I got the zero and eight team and the worst team in the league gets the one one, I'm not giving it away. But outside of that situation, zero and eight, one and seven, worst team automatically gets it. If I'm gonna give then if I'm gonna give a one, I might as well throw a two out there too, right? Yeah. I mean, like you said, Anthony Costanzo was a first-round pick long 2011. Uh, you got the the center Ryan Kelly, who was a first-round pick Out last of Bama, year, two years ago, and then now you have the 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 guard Quinton Nelson, and they're all finally coming together. This line looks good. You have Andrew Luck back there. Then to put on top of that, you have Frank Reich coming in here doing what he does. And, uh, you know, implementing his system with a, a lot of shorter passes, quicker stuff, get the ball out. Uh, and, and still shot here or there down the field, and you'll you'll see those opportunities growing somewhat as the as the year goes on. Um, and just Mac right now seems like could be the missing piece to this puzzle of what was going on there. Uh, we came on here a couple of weeks ago, told you that you should be selling your uh, Naheen Hines stock for how high it was if you could get it. Um, now, if it's come back down to earth, I wouldn't mind buying Naheen Hines like like Big Co alluded to because he's looked good in his fill in duty. Plus I think he's a very good catcher of the football. But Mac is is the guy that, that everyone wants it, wanted him to be. He's he's looked a lot better running between the tackles, not bouncing things outside, which was the big knock on him. Well that was what we always said. I mean that was our knock on him. Right. And then everybody mostly that he needs to learn <laughs> the way I learned from my father. The way he learned from his father. <laughs> His father, obviously, being Frank Gore. Right. Well, he's he's figured it out. Which if you see that pad level that Max rolling with right. right now, it looks good. I, I it's like low. everything I'm seeing from Mac. I would certainly give up a one. I would probably give up the one and the two. I'm not selling high on Marlon Mack, like Big Co alluded to. I think it's you got the Andrew Luck uh, running back here, and not as much as we talked about Aaron Rodgers. You know, sometimes with the really good quarterback who who can throw the ball effectively, it's not as great to have his running back because they do weird things sure um but uh i think it's great to have this running back especially with this head coach's system uh and what he wants to do and naheen hines will still get run but marlon mack is going to be the guy that gets his lion shares of what's going on um and i think he's he's looked looked the party's looked electric this is what you're looking for and well hines was definitely in the spell role there's no sure, doubt about it for sure he looked good but he was not he was number two but yeah. Mac, Mac, Mac's the guy, and this is this isn't the situation that you. This is finally a decent line, which this has been, as, at whatever you want to say, talent level of anything on this team. The Achilles' heel of terribleness has been the offensive line for yeah. years, and, and they've been hit. trying to figure this out. And now you company this with a, a run game that, as it goes on, will be more and more respected. Now the schedule does get a little tougher for Marlon Mack here, heading down the road for the next couple of games. So don't get discouraged if it isn't 30 points from here on out. I mean, 30 points is a, is a first round draft pick, like a first round startup pick. Yes, yeah, girly. So, so don't get don't get caught up on those numbers. It's going to come back down to earth most likely. But you're you're seeing what the ceilings can be on really good games. It could get tougher sledding here. So if he gets down back to the 12, 9, 13, 15 games, don't be like, oh, this was just a flash in a pan. I think this is the real deal, and this is a good offense with a great system in place and, and then to go along with what i was saying with that offensive line and and, and the play calling and all that of being the achilles heel of not being able to get to the next level this uh i, I really like frank reich i think i think he's going to get this team heading in the right direction and, and the play calling and the what they do is is awesome and and i really like what's going on i like the outlook for andrew luck andrew luck seems to really like what's going on and i think you can put all the issues of whatever was wrong with andrew luck 
to bed for now. I mean, maybe it rears Agreed. its ugly head at some point, but I think we can finally stop having that conversation. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm all in. I I, I think I, I am too. I mean, I love the way that Max running the ball right now. He's he, Max been a big fan of ours on this podcast. We went pretty hard in the paint for him last off season before the rookie draft as a guy who was talented but raw that wasn't going to be ready to initially come in and crush. And then he got drafted to the Colts, and then the fantasy community jumped on that situation and said that Frank Gore wasn't going to be the man and that Mac was going to be the dude in this job. And we had to come on. That was our first YouTube video ever. It was like, settle down on Marlon Mack. Like, we love him, but but don't expect a bunch of production out of him for year one because they got out. Frank Gore is a really good player, and Robert Turbin is a really good player, and he's just not ready. He's a still serial, had a bad offensive line, still had, you and know, he's still a issues. serial bouncer. He wants us to bounce it outside, and but the way he's running right now, like he's he's having great success bouncing it outside, but he's also putting his head down and getting the third and shorts and converting the short down situations, and you see him almost setting up inside runs by starting outside and then cutting up field which right. you rarely saw him from him in college because he had so much success bouncing outside he's just he's he's just so quick and up to speed it just immediately he's just so electric and then the the balance is phenomenal it's really hard to get this guy down you can't knock him off his track sure he's been shifting his lanes and contouring his rushing lanes like it's just been really fun to watch he there, people are knocking him right now for his receiving ability. He does have three drops on 11 targets, which isn't the best. But, I mean, he had 65 receptions in college, and when they throw him a screen pass and he catches it, it like it just it looks pretty fluid. So I think he's a pretty he's solid receiver. He's been pretty open because of the scheme and everything. When they do throw it his way, I, this is, it, he'll be fine as a receiver. So I trade, I trade my first-round pick for him all day. I don't think I'd give the 1-1, but, I mean... I don't think he could by the end of the season you could be saying I would give my one one all day for this guy. It could happen. And Maybe. another and I and one thing you gotta like is the backup is smaller. Nate Hines is you know I mean Max five eleven, two thirteen. That's what I'm saying. That's that's fairly No, but I'm that's size. Uh, no, but I'm saying but like you don't Sized. like the backup is not the thumper at the goal line. Right. You know, yeah. so you well, got Jordan Wilkins is still there. Which sure. could, could be and he's gonna factor in some He's a but, jag. Yeah. I know uh, you hate that word. <laughs> I, I think Jordan Wilkins is a fine all-around player, but he does not. He's not explosive. He's you know, Nine Hines is more explosive for sure, and then Max another level on top of it. And I want you'd like I like the fact that when Matt gets down there, they're not pulling him out for another back at the sure. goal line. Obviously, if you rumble. You know, and you're tired and you get pulled out. That's one thing. But you yeah, can, there'll be some Naheen Hines stealing some sure. stuff here and there. But a fa fair point there. So I think we're all in on Naheen Hines. Don't sell high. We're all holding on to that guy, uh, Marlon even, Mack, or Marlon Mack. Sorry, and our our uh, our team seller here is even not selling. Right, I'm a big seller, but I uh, <laughs> I, I big coach team seller. I don't think you got to sell him, and I would uh, I would use this window of opportunity for if somebody says, you know, they're upset about not capitalizing on Naheen Hines. If you got Marlon Mack, I'd love to go buy Hines for cheap if you can, um, because obviously if something happens to Mack, you've seen Hines put up. Hines can catch the ball. Obviously, that was in a window, and it's you know that was in a, a period of time where the wide receivers were desolate. Um, Still so are maybe yeah. Well, maybe not so much with Doyle back and Inman in there catching balls and not batting them to the ground like uh, Chester Rogers. Um, <laughs> because a lot of Inman on this podcast. But uh, so just pointed, you know, maybe maybe Hines can be a really solid fill in if your boy Mac goes out. Sure. 